Good evening and beyond venue, my fond fair friends and family. This is your humble narrator, Diomedes Rouge, here to, well, firstly, apologize for my failure to present you a content sooner. I have been entertaining guests during this merry season, and I do apologize if you felt neglected. And secondly, to present you the update for... <clears throat> What if Issei was the reincarnation of Eskenor? Oh yes, I'm still doing this one. Do not worry. And don't worry, the other ones will still continue to go on as well. I love giving my friends and family more content to enjoy. Because if I can brighten your day even just a little, it means I'm doing my job damn well. Now, we will pick up right where we left off, essentially. Issei technically dying. I say technically because we both know, well, we all know he's not staying dead. Now, Rius pops before him, does the whole, you know, reviving him shtick, and brings her to... Brings him to the, well, cat school, cat school hideout on camp, on the campus school hideout, whatever you want to call it. Their own little private club area. Now, while Issei is being revived back to life, he's having a very, very lucid dream. And I do mean lucid. It's almost as if he was this person and feels this awe-inspiring strength. <clears throat> In case you're wondering what his what he's viewing, he's viewing his uh, young es he's viewing young Escanor's first fight with well who else? Meliodas. He's viewing this from the eyes of well a bystander. He's viewing this fight as this big mountain of a man is brought down by this little blonde-haired, child-looking son of a gun. And he's just going, what? How is that? What? What's going on? As then he proceeds to fast forward and sees this man in a smaller form working alongside him. What's going on? Why am I seeing this? Ah, my head hurts. And it proceeds further and further. He's getting bits and pieces. Not so much actual information. He's viewing all these points, but he has no context. And then he feels a sharp pain in his chest. <clears throat> Ah, uh, what's going on? Ah, uh, is this heaven or hell? What is it? Make up your mind. Uh, as this pain begins to turn into this type of burning sensation, a very powerful burning sensation flowing throughout his entire body. Ah, uh, uh, why do I feel like I'm on fire? <clears throat> oh, it's like I'm on the surface of the sun. As he keeps going. And eventually, a young woman with black hair and relatively skimpy attire with a boar tattoo holds him close and says, shh, shh, shh. It's okay. You're just going through something you weren't ready for yet. What? Who who are you? What's going on? It's okay. It's okay. No need to panic. You're I swear you've always been more trouble than you're worth. <sighs> no worries though. 
I'll always be there for you, whether you realize it or not. Stay safe, <laughs> my lion. As she touches the amulet on his chest. And upon that, he immediately, Issei immediately, huh? <gasps> jolts straight up. He touches, he touches his clothing. He's fine. There's no hole. There's no mark. There's nothing. So what the hell? What's going on? I was, I was pierced. But now I'm, did I, was it a bad dream? Where am I? And what's this thing on my hand? As he looks towards the, well, standard boosted gear, the glove. <clears throat> now, he kind of gets up, he's a little bit lightheaded, and he walks over and sees a pitcher of water with a glass next to it. He downs the entire pitcher. He does not bother pouring himself a glass. He just downs the pitcher. Ice cubes and all. Oh. Oh. Okay. So I'm in a strange place. <clears throat> I'm not dead. And I'm feverish. And I got this thing on my hand. As he just tries to take it off, but he realizes he can't take off this glove. He says, why the hell won't you come off? And he just thinks of it like, wait a minute. What the hell is this thing? As something inside of him. Well... I'll actually make a correction for y'all. <clears throat> a darker, raspier, draconic, dragonier voice inside of him just says, Just think of it being off. Hmm? Who said that? And so he. Uh, I guess my own air thoughts are playing mind tricks on me, okay? And it turns off, and he's like, Okay. Did I get slipped a Mickey, or did I overdose on something? Did someone give me something in my drink earlier? How high am I? As he hears, you're not high, you're just finding out what the world truly is like. As he turns around and sees, well, Rius. What the world's truly like. What the hell do you mean, what the world's truly like? Wait a minute, I know you. You're... You're Miss Grimmery. You're an A student at our school. What's going on? Where am I? Maybe you can explain. Well, I can explain greatly. You've just been resurrected as a demon. Or rather, a devil. What? Okay. No, you aren't explaining anything. Got it. I must have hit my head very, very hard, and now I'm hallucinating. Okay, that makes perfect sense. <clears throat> well, if I'm hallucinating, and if this is all a dream, that means I could do pretty much whatever I want, right? This isn't a dream, I assure you. Oh, yeah, sure. Whatever you say. Of course it's a dream. I just had a magic glove appear on my hand and disappear like that. I <clears throat> apparently was resurrected as a devil, you said? A devil. A devil. Yes, a devil. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, forgive me if I don't believe you. But I don't believe you. Not many do at first. Anyways. Okay. So why don't you prove to me that I'm some sort of devil? And, well, how do we put this? Pardon me. 
That's whenever Akino kind of teleports into the room. What the hell? Um. <clears throat> okay, that was unexpected. That was that was completely unexpected. Okay, okay, maybe I'm not dreaming. I need to sit down. And as he tries to sit down, he clenches his back a bit, and, well, the wings pop out. And he's going, Okay. Could someone please explain to me what the hell happened? And so, Rias begins to explain everything. His date, his fight, or attempt to fight back. His death. His rebirth. How he pleaded to, for another chance. At this point, he kind of sits down and looks at himself and thinks, The hell did I do? So you're saying I signed my soul off to a devil? Technically speaking, yes. Shit. <sighs> not that I'm not grateful, but is there any way out of it? Excuse me? Listen, I, I get that you saved me. And I kind of do appreciate that. But I'm not into the whole... I'm not the best when it would be come to making deals or doing trades. And I'm not into beating up schoolgirls or shit like that or going after the church. So, yeah. If you wouldn't mind, just let me die again. One, that's racist. Huh? You really think we do those things? Well, you're a devil, right? Isn't that part of your job? No. Okay, sorry, didn't know. What is part of your job, then? You will find that out in time. Two, you belong to me. Excuse me? Your soul is mine, which means you are mine. You will do as you are ordered. You are not allowed to die until I say so. Uh-huh. Well, <laughs> granted you did save my life, but I don't like following orders. I've never come across anyone who can give good ones to me. Well, you just have. <clears throat> and right when he's about to say something, something in him tells him, this person is dangerous. Both of them are. And he gets the feeling as if there's a couple people behind him as well. Hmm? <laughs> Listen, obviously I'm not in your level of strength. So what the hell do you have use of me for? Eight. What? She holds up a ch she look points at a chessboard. You consumed eight of my pawns. What? For every household in the ranks of devils, there are certain traditions, and there are certain classes. Akino here is my queen. Oh, I didn't realize you were... No, that's not how that works. Really? Yes, really. Oh, so you're... <sighs> okay, my bad, my bad, just... Want to be sure where you, uh, you don't need to worry about that. Of course, of course. My apologies. Just curious. I already have one knight and one rook 
Uh-huh. You consumed eight of my pawn pieces. What does that mean? So I consumed eight of... So you used eight of the weakest pieces to make a deal with me for reviving me? Essentially, yes. Uh-huh. So I'm... Eight times a weak link. So I'm a weak link eight times over. Not necessarily. Hmm. You heard me, not necessarily. Because you see, that's a high amount of power for just one piece. I could have used a rook instead, or maybe even a knight. But none of those would have been quite equal. Eight pawns was the only thing that would suffice. Believe it or not, you have quite the amount of potential inside of you. And I wish to see that utilized in my family's favor. My house's favor. Uh-huh. As I said, I don't do dirty work. I don't do blood correction. I don't do bloody work. Oh, and what if it was about that girl, you know, the one that stabbed you? That wouldn't be work. That would be pleasure. Oh, you're angry, are you? Angry and disappointed in her, myself, for being fueled by a hussy. Hmm. Strong language. Strong emotions. Fair point, fair point. Well, how about this? We make a deal. Another one? Indeed. I help you get stronger to take out that particular fallen angel, and in turn... You do as I say, until then. Alright, what's in it for me? Simple. If you haven't changed your mind about how you view us by the time you've gotten your revenge, I'll let you die. Hmm. You'll what? I'll let you die. I'll take back the power I've granted you, and I'll let you go on to another life. I'll let you pass on. Free of charge. Uh-huh. And what do you get out of it? Someone to do menial tasks for me in the meantime. Nothing bloody? Nothing bloody. You promise. I swear on the House of Grimmery. Issei stands up extend, and extends his hand. Very well. I'll be in your care. And can you tell those other two that they don't have to be on guard? It's kind of nerve-wracking having them behind me. Oh, you noticed them, did you? Eh, not at first, I'll admit. But once she entered the room and I started paying attention, yes. Hmm. At least you're honest. I have no reason to lie. Lying's for the weak. Lying is for the weak and pathetic. If you can't admit to your faults, then you cannot improve upon them. And if you cannot improve upon something, then there's no point in it. Hmm. You're going to be fun, Issei. Why, thank you. And it somewhat continues from there. And by somewhat, I'll explain in more detail. Pardon me. <clears throat> so, the same deal applies to where he has to go over to the Neat's house, or the otaku, or the nerd, however you want to describe him, 
I admit, I'm a fellow geek myself. Don't punish me too hard in the comments, please. But he's kind of gotten the hang of flying. How, you may ask? Simple. Plot convenience. And, well, to, if we're being completely honest, <laughs> kind of muscle memory from a past life, if we'll say. He's kind of gotten the hang of flying, so it's a little easier for him. So he kind of flies over, talks with the guy. They don't get along as much as in canon, but Issei does kind of have a view him as an interesting person and does kind of keep his attention. Basically, reenacting some of the old manga and anime he used to read and watch as a kid and such. You know, having all sorts of fun times. He leaves. The same things in canon happen, leading up to the moment he meets up with Asia. They talk, they chat, they bond. And then we all know the crazy white-haired bastard, I think his name was Siegfried, comes in to try and ruin the day. Or was it Sigurd? I can't remember that guy's name for the life of me. Please help me in the comments if you guys remember. Try looking it up. Too many characters to look through. Yes, I'm sorry. This humble narrator got lazy. <laughs> Please forgive. Now. Upon, in, upon the whole confrontation, this is the first, well, life and death fight Issei has been in since his death. And it's, how should I say, kind of exhilarating to him. Guy brings out his gun, tries to shoot at Issei, but he brings out his gauntlet. Boost! <laughs> And he's able to, well, given a two times boost and his already powerful physique, a two times boost to all of his stats, I'd say it's enough to let him see, to guess the trajectory of where bullets would come from. He's not so much seeing the bullets as guessing where they're going to go from the where the guy's pointing the barrel. And he's able to deflect him with the gauntlet, or rather the glove. Don't worry, it will go, it will get bigger later, me promise. And he, so he does. This irritates Siegfried, to the point where he draws his sword and his gang a little bit excited. Why? Because this man's getting annoying, and he doesn't like things that are annoying and getting in his way. He tries to attack, Issei blocks, deflects, kicks him in the shin, and punches him straight in the face. At this point in time, unbeknownst to him, the amulet that's around his neck, that's been around in his family for generations, there's a small crack beginning to form in the ruby eye, in the left eye, of the ruby that sits in, that's in the lion that sits on the lion's head and boy let me tell you this is going to get a lot more fun upon punching this person with his ungloved hand he sends him through a wall he say looks back at his hand just going I always have that much force. As he re-enters his fighting stance, bringing his fists close to his chest, ready to launch them out at the moment's notice. Siegfried gets up and fires off two rounds through a smoke, and, well, Issei, being the nice man he is, intercepts them with his body. Well, his covering Asya. He gets hit a couple times, but this is when the rest of the gang... Barge in, in one second, correction, where Kiba comes in and essentially starts his fight with Siegfried, while Asya kinda, well not kinda, she 
heals up our poor Issei, who just took a couple bullets for her. At this moment in time, Siegfried decides the best action would be to kind of run away, considering one of these guys was giving him trouble. Two of them is bound to probably either be the death of him, or at mo or at worst, or at best, hurt him pretty badly. So he retreats, falls back, runs with his tail between his legs, you could say. I prefer that one. Now... Upon his retreat, come in a, they essentially take Issei and Asya and bring them over to the household. They watch over her and somewhat explain the situation. Now, she tells them about kind of why they're after her and how her ability to heal and everything. And Issei kind of makes a vow to always protect her. Why? Because he feels pity for this poor girl. No one should have to go through life like that. No one. He offers a place at his home for her to rest up at. And then he realizes he has yet to talk this over with his mother. So he kind of quickly gives her a call as his dad's out on business, telling her, yeah, he's got a friend coming over. And if she could spend, and if they could spend the night, eh, because they are, uh, their family's kind of gone out of town and he said he would, she gives him a non so welcome agreement you could say that she would gladly let her stay over but now that she has to go grab more that let her his friend come over but now she has to go and grab more groceries as well as figure out a good punishment for him not telling her sooner this is when he say kind of takes a big gulp and just goes yes mother you're clear to come over. <laughs> What's the matter? Hey, she's pissed at me. <laughs> Is everything gonna be okay? I may die, but our debt, we're fine. I mean, you've already done that before. As Akino chirps in, be like, eh, yeah. Eh, yeah. Uh, at least if I die, I don't think I could go through it again. I think I only get one of those, though. Right, Rios? Yeah, you pretty much only get one of those. Got it! Oh, this is gonna hurt. As he brings Asya over. Now, what he failed to mention to his mother, as a lot of our smarter viewers here would have noticed, he failed to mention the gender of his friend. And that makes a lot of difference. <laughs> Especially to a mother. Because she's already out, he brings her home, shits her down, everything's going nice and dandy when Mother Dearest pops back in and sees that the friend is not only a girl, but a girl in what looks like vestments. Oh, is Mama Bear pissed? She casually walks over and grabs Issei by the ear and kind of pulls him upstairs saying, and while he's being dragged along, like, ah, 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 Asya, Asya, um, don't worry, um, Mom will take good care of you. The others will be by tomorrow. <laughs> Do you need help? No, don't. You'll just make it worse in this case. As Mother just chimes in, being like, don't worry, dear, he'll be fine. I just need to educate him. On certain manners. Oh God. Help! And immediately gets a twinge of pain surging through his body. One half hour long lecture later. Involve one half hour long lecture later. And an eight, and a eight hour training regime on his off day tomorrow. Then yes. Yeah. And 
he agrees to, well, well, and she, the mother agrees to let her stay, considering she's already agreed to it. But she'll be staying in, well, Issei's room while Issei sleeps on the couch. Like, son of a... Alright. I have no problems with that. As he kind of just sits there, sprawls out, and Asya just kind of goes to sleep on his bed. And the mother goes to sleep in her bed, and everything seems nice and pleasant. Next morning, he gets up around four in the morning, same as his mother, because they're used to waking up early at this point. It's early, they went to bed around, I'd say, nine o'clock. They wake up early, get their breakfast, leave some for Asya in the microwave, and then begin to go out training. Why? Because he has eight hours to work off, and he doesn't feel like, how should I put this, holding her up as long as she needs to be held up. So by the time eight o'clock rolls around in the morning, Asya's just getting up, She's walking downstairs for breakfast, and she's noting, noticing that poor little Issei has already been flipped over on his back, currently panting, drenched in sweat, and uh, she kind of gets a bit red. Why? Because she's seeing a man with a six-pack set of abs, drenched in sweat, kind of looking, well, how should I say this? In her eyes, very attractive. Well, <laughs> right in front of her. Kind of the first time she's ever seen this, she's a bit awkward, you know. She kind of turns away and is going, well, what was going on? Punishment, the mother says casually as she walks in. And he so just kind of gets a boy. <sighs> Eight hours, done with. Give me about a half an hour of rest. I'll be good to go. <clears throat> are, are you sure you say it's... Don't push yourself too hard. It's no problem. After all, you're a friend. I always put my friends on high regard. I'll take a tour of the city and meet up with the gang later. And so he does. And I'd say this is around getting to 10 o'clock in the morning and... He, oh, no. 9.30 in the morning, and he's feeling refreshed. Like, virtually nothing ever happened. He took a shower, got ready, and he goes, Oh, ready to start the day. As he kind of takes Asya, and they ride on the bike. Why? Because it's kind of awkward seeing a teenager fly through a city with wings on his back in the middle of the daylight. You know, common people reasons. I mean... He good at flying, but he not so good at using the stealth. Using stealth magic and stuff yet. <laughs> so nighttime flying is usually where he reserves it because people can easily mistake him for like a bird from how high he flies. And if they don't, well, they'll just think they're seeing things by the time he passes by. So they go to the park, have a fun time, get some... Crepes, I believe. Yes, crepes. And they begin to relax when, well, I'm not even going to refer to her by her name. You know, the fallen angel bitch shows up. And boy, does Issei get angry. She shows up and... You know, standard as usual, cocky, talking about his sacred gear, how it's just a two times multiplier and everything, how he's essentially useless. And that's whenever Is and that's whenever our boy Issei just says, Okay. So it multiplies my stats time my power times two. So that's the reason I've been more badass than usual. <laughs> if you can call that being badass, I put you through the ringer. You actually had to call in your backup to actually do anything to me. 
No, I was just getting irritated. Yeah, and I've been getting a lot stronger. As he brings out his gear. Burst! So I'll tell you what, you insignificant worm. Because I'll say this is around 1030 I'll tell you what, you insignificant worm. I'll give you one chance. Apologize for being born in my world. And I'll gladly let you live. If you don't, well, let's just put it this way. Those wings are going to get a lot bloodier before this, night's over, before this day is over with. As he gets into a stance, and Asia's kind of looking at him like, she's never seen Issei kind of like this before. It's almost as if he switched into another person all of a sudden. Issei's just going, so this is what real battle's like. Oh, I miss, I, I love it. I don't know why I'm getting so excited. It's like something's taking control. I don't know what it is, but gosh, it feels good. <clears throat> As he's getting ready to, well, pounce, <laughs> she says, not at this moment. <laughs> You've gotten quite cocky with your new little devil powers, but that's not going to help you much. Don't worry. We'll take her in dear sweet time, and there won't be a thing you can do about it, Lily say. <laughs> As she disappears, he just kind of... <sighs> As he stands back up, pops his knuckles and neck and just says, Well, that was disappointing. That was disappointing entirely. I was actually expecting a fight. Oh, well. You're okay, aren't you, Asia? Yeah. Good. Now, let's finish our food and get out of here and meet up with the others. Now, they leave and one moment here. Now, Asia and Issei are walking back to the to the clubhouse when Issei gets a call gets a call from his mother telling him he needs to come home now that he forgot to do some laundry he says really do I have to come home right now he says yes yes you do come home right now he says ah fine he tells Asya, sorry, he'll be back in a little while. He has to go take care of something his mother told him to do. And that, well, they're right next to the clubhouse, so... Naturally, she should be fine, right? There should be no problems, right? I mean, they're in their own territory. Nothing could go wrong, right? <laughs> right. So, he tells her he'll have to go home and that to continue on without him, he'll check in on her in a little bit. He'll call the others and check on them in a little bit after he gets done with whatever his mother has got for him. So, he takes off. He calls about halfway to his house. He calls up his mother saying, You didn't have to interrupt me with my friends, you know. You could just... I, I would have gladly taken care of laundry when I got home. She says, What are you talking about? What are you talking about what I'm talking about? You just got through calling me while I was in the middle of talking with Asia on our way to the clubhouse about me having to come home and do laundry. Issei, I didn't call you. What? 
I didn't call you. What do you mean you didn't call me? I didn't call you. I understand that you have a little lady friend. You really think I'm going to call you while you're in the middle of trying to seduce her? I'm not trying to seduce her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your father said the same thing whenever we... Your father said the same thing on our third date. <laughs> yes, I saw those looks in your eyes. I'm not... She's a woman on a cloth. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I wouldn't interfere with you trying to seduce a girl. I'm a mother, not a prude. And besides, you don't even have enough, and besides, you don't even have enough laundry to really need doing anyways. What? But what about the, the fresh set? I already washed those. Wait, what? Mom, I gotta go. I think something just went wrong. Wait, what? I'll talk to you later. Bye. As he looks, and he can't find the call history of that phone call. He's like, no, 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 no. As he's running full steam. Kind of forgetting that he could technically fly, but he's running full steam. He's calling Rius. He's calling Kato. He's calling Ah, Not Asya, uh... Akano. He's even calling freaking Kaneko, trying to figure out where Asia is. And <clears throat> then he thinks about it. Son of a bitch. As per and they meet up at the clubhouse. As per in canon, they find out where the hideout is. They are able to charge in, yada, 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 blah, 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 Akino does her whole sadi sadist, sadist thing, Rias blasts people away, Konako's beating the crap out of people, and we all know what Kiba's doing, what Kaido's doing, just slicing and dicing fools. Let's get to Issei, shall we? Because this is where the fun's going to start. Oh, yes. I've been trying to rush to this moment, I admit. But it's a good moment that I've been preparing. So please bear with this humble narrator. <clears throat> so. Issei walks into the church and comes across, well, you want to Sorry, no, I wasn't going to say her name, but it'll get confusing otherwise. So I had to give myself a refresher course. Again, a lot of people in there. Small brain. So, he wa Issei walks into the church to see Rainer. Well, has just finished killing Asia And removing her healing rings. Issei, in a fit of rage, and I do mean a fit of rage, puts on the glove and charges. Rainer just kind of, well, not even kind of, she just boldly laughs. Stating, you're such a fool, do you really think you can stop me now? Impaling him in the both of his legs with two spears of light. This is where things change from in canon. Because Issei was praying to God, however, he looks to he looks down and says, "Of course, I'm a devil now. Of course, God won't answer me. Why should he? Technically, I've turned my back on him." The only thing I can rely in is my own power. The only thing I can rely in is my own strength. I won't let others take the brunt of their power, take the brunt of my 
faults any longer. No one's going to get hurt for my actions ever again. As he begins to feel an immense heat flow over him. As one of the rubies in the eye of the lion, of the golden lion head on his medallion, shatters. As suddenly, this immense wave of energy just flows out of him, causing his clothes to kind of burst in flame, if you will. Mainly the shirt. As the gauntlet itself is beginning to react to this, and Drag, he's feeling this energy overflowing through it. Now, Diomedes, or Dio, I hear you say, how can the energy be overflowing through him? It's nighttime. Yes, it is nighttime. However, remember, Rita has the Rita, which the amulet is connected to, has the ability called charge in fire, which means it stores up his mag Escanor's magical energy and releases it whenever it's deemed necessary, including back into him. <laughs> hmm. Yes, I somewhat thought this through. I may be a humble narrator, but I somewhat do my research. At least I try, dang it. <laughs> I try and connect it. So, he feels this immense power of energy flowing into him, and he goes, Oh, this is going to be interesting. All right, kid. You want to go through something? You want to do something like that, I see. All right, I'll react in kind. <clears throat> as, the gaunt, as the glove begins to transform into the gauntlet, Boost! As a secondary boost fires off, as he keeps bulking up, he goes from having a standard six-pack to an eight-pack. He gets a little bit taller as he walks forward. The room begins to emanate with heat. Not to the point to where Escanor was. No, 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 no. I'd say right now he's about maybe 15% of Escanor power. But the sad part is that 15% just got doubled. And in three, two, one, boost! It gets doubled again. Needless to say, this aura is beginning to catch things on fire. As Rainer is just trying to throw these spears at him, but it's not doing a damn thing. Her healing is trying is the healing rings that she stole from Asia is keeping up with the damage she's getting dealt with by the by the heat that Issei's giving off, but if, for a split second she takes her eyes off of him, and when she opens him again, he's right in front of her, punching her straight in the gut, sending her flying sky high, and I do mean sky high straight through the top of the roof of the church, all the way, I'd say about a good 80 feet in the air. And all you see and hear is a thoom. As Esken, as you see Iskenor, or Issei Eskenor, jumping straight through the roof, the hole in the roof. Surpassing Rainer's height, as you just hear, boost! As he turns, as he begins to fall back down and, well, punch her again. Slamming her, sending her <whistles> faster than a bullet straight down into the pavement of the church. And he comes, and Issei comes crashing down, landing foot first on her chest, just boom. At this point, Rainer, with the healing ring doing its best to keep up with her, to keep up with the damage she's being dealt, but 
constantly being taxed by the freaking heat wave coming off of Issei at this moment. Because, yes, he is getting a lot more powerful as the boosts keep going. Another three, two, one, boost! And why am I going like that? Simple. The second level of the boosted gear has a 10 second cooldown, in case people forgot. So yes, he gets one two times boost every 10 seconds. But two times boosts of a small sun is pretty damn powerful. And he just tells her, is there any last words? Please, please don't kill me. I'll, I'll do whatever you want. I'll give you anything you want. Please, uh, money, power, my body, anything. I won't, uh, I won't betray you again. I'm sorry, Issei. Please don't hurt me. As she tries to put on that innocent face. And then Issei just smiles. You don't hate me? No, I never hated you, Reina. I pitied you. Huh? As I said before, I pity the fact that you were born into my world. <clears throat> As he feels the urge to want to say something. Something in his mu the gauntlet wants to say, explosion. But Issei thinks that's too generic. Cruel explosion. As this wave of energy, actually, this wave of energy flows into the gauntlet itself, aimed right at Renair's head. Firing all that pent up energy straight not only through her head, removing it entirely, but also about a good 180 feet straight down. And then causing a bit of an explosion underneath the church, which causes a minor earthquake, considering the sheer fact that you're creating an explosion that far down. Yeah, also ruining a bit of the lead lines and everything else. So technically he caused a natural disaster. Way to go, Issei, you dumbass. Oh wait, I'm the one that made him do that. Way to go, narrator, you dumbass. Sorry, no apologies. Right. Now, after that, it kind of goes back to being in canon. Rius and them show up and go, what the hell was that display? Mm. As he just kind of falls back on his butt, because he just used a lot of energy in that thing, and he's just going, what the hell happened to this? Ah, it wasn't no simple two times multiplier. It was the what? So you're the wielder of the Welsh dragon. The what? The red dragon of destruction. The boosted gear. Huh. Neat. That's nice. I feel tired. I feel like I got drained. Oh. As. Akino Kyle looks at the necklace of his amulet going, Hey, Issei, I think, uh, I don't think you should wear that in your fights any longer. What do you mean? Well, it looks like you already lost one of the eyes in the lion head. He goes, Oh, shit! Kyle looks at it and be like, Ah, oh, damn it. Guys, I get that replaced. Grandma's gonna be pissed if she finds out. It's okay, it's okay. You just have to get it replaced before I see her again. Why don't you uh, go to a... Uh, why don't you hand it to me? I could take it to a jeweler's. No. I was always told to wear this. No matter what. No matter the circumstance. I have to wear this amulet. Uh-huh. Why? I don't know. I was just told by my family to do so. And you're going to follow it. Yes. Why not? I do not want to get my ass handed to me. You just did a shit ton of damage to everything. Yes, but I can't punch my mother. She can punch me. 
Yes, but I can't hit my mother with all my might. However, she has no regard. She has no qualms in that regard. See the problem? Okay then. Exactly. And they kind of go and revive Asia. She becomes the bishop. He makes a vow to protect her, and then Rias brings up the fact that, oh, so you're sticking around. Huh? Don't you remember our promise? You said that after you got your revenge, I said that after you got your revenge, if you felt like it, I'll end you. I'll remove the... I'll let you die. But from what you just said, it sounds like you'll be sticking around. Yeah, I think I will. And why is that? Simple. It's not boring hanging out with y'all, for one. And for two, I got to experience a hell of a fight that I could never experience in any of those standard tournaments I would get part of. And three, well, a lot of pretty ladies. Who could say no to hanging around a lot of pretty ladies? <laughs> and as well as you, Kaido. <laughs> You're a great guy to be. You're a great friend. I feel tired, though. I think I'm going to sleep for the next year. As he kind of takes a knee. Ugh. What? What? So, that's the power of the Red Dragon Emperor. So, that's what's been laying in my arm this entire time, huh? Neat. No wonder I've been feeling all this power. As Drake just kind of counters with, wait, what? Just thinking as said, wait, you mean... He thinks that was me that caused all of that. Oh, 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 oh this kid's gonna be fun. Oh, I can feel it. He may be the most powerful user of me yet. Oh, I can't wait to come across that white bitch now. Oh, this is going to be brilliant. <laughs> oh, what a beautiful day. And to that, my fond fair friends, family, this has been your humble narrator, Diomedes Rouge, wishing you good evening and au revoir. Stay safe, have a good evening, and be blessed. Bye.